Um, we're going to be speaking to the Labour Party, James, uh, in about an hour's time. Some awkward headlines for them this morning. Labour MP loses the whip for linking Gaza to the Holocaust is the headline uh, in the mail. Just for anyone who isn't familiar, can explain what this story is? Sure. So this is uh, Labour MP Kate Osmore, who this week, uh, ahead of uh, Holocaust Memorial Day, uh, decided to uh, talk about genocide since the Holocaust uh, in the Second World War. And one of those she mentioned was the ongoing conflict in Gaza. Now, obviously, this is quite uh, offensive to Jewish groups for a number of different reasons. Uh, and subsequently, as a result of that comparison, she has, over the weekend, uh, had the whip withdrawn from her and she's going to be spoken to by the Labour Chief Whip. And it's another example, perhaps, of uh, Sir Keir Starmer's backbenchers generating unfavourable headlines at a time when he's hoping to convince the public that the whole party has changed. She's already apologised, mm. but let's unpick it. What, what was she doing here? Was she playing to her base? Was she doing that equivocation which Jeremy Corbyn was famous for, condemning all forms of terrorism? So she's mentioned Holocaust Memorial Day and, of course, the yeah. dreadful, dreadful things that happened in World War II, but then feels that what she has to play to her base and also say, but, of course, let's not forget the alleged genocide in Gaza. I mean, it's so clunky, it's extraordinary. Yeah, and I think it's about, I think, the importance of, you know, Gaza to a number of Labour MPs and all of this, which is that... Uh, it's the second, M second MP, incidentally, to have lost the whip over comments in relation to the Gaza struggle after uh, the conflict was going on there, after Andy McDonnell a few months ago as well. But it just seems very needless, tasteless and, and downright offensive. Uh, and obviously, it's something that the Labour Party are painfully aware of, obviously, after the last few years and all the headlines, etc. So invoking Gaza in this context just seems to be uh, pretty um, you know, s stupid, to say the least. Re Rebecca, do you think this strays into anti-Semitism, a comment like this? I mean, I, I, I would hope not. Um, and I think, I think, to your point, I think it's kind of clunk, I think it's clunky phrasing, probably playing to a base. But I think that the swift action we've seen from the from Labour over the weekend to remove the whip, I think, shows how far Keir Starmer has moved this party. You know, under um, Corbyn, you can imagine this kind of thing would have been kind of, you know, uh, forgiven under the we condemn all forms of, etc., all that kind of clumsy wording. Um, and it massively undermines all the work he's tried to do in separating, you know, where Labour is now to the, the horrendous accusations and reality, actually, of anti-Semitism in the party. Um, but she, she's apologised, hasn't she? Does she take the tweet down? Uh, I think she, it wasn't a tweet. It was a message oh, she sent tweet. out to uh, party it's... members in Edmonton, North London, mm. uh, talking about this, and then she issued a subsequent statement. But, uh, yeah, I think the fact that they've taken... It just seems, of all the timing as well, to do it, you know, Holocaust Memorial Day, just... Mm walking into needless traps uh, and coming of course i think four days after to hear at lee at prime minister's question slightly different context but accused rishi sunak of having blood on his hands when it came to gaza i just think this is an issue of which is of huge uh, emotional importance to a lot of labor mps on the left of the party mm -hmm. and they undermine i think their cause by saying um over the top and um inoffensive and offensive mm -hmm. things James, how much damage does a story like this actually do to the Labour Party? Well, the fact that Keir Starmer has taken swift action will negate some of the damage on all of that. Um, I think the fact that it's some of the inside pages, about you know, page six, seven, etc., would mm -hmm. suggest that it's not going to be as damaging as it could have been. Uh, I think it's a reminder, though, that the big argument that CCHQ and the Tories are going to put across the next election is that, yes, you might trust Keir Starmer, but the people behind him, the people who make up the government of the country, are the ones you can't trust. So yeah. it's playing into that conservative narrative that, OK, Keir Starmer might have put you know, a sort of nice face on the front of it, but actually there's a lot of people behind the scenes who are undermining the cause and who are a risk to the government. Mm.